So the most important thing about leg riding is like of course stay in position because if you can't stay in position you you won't score anything. Actually it's really dangerous. So what I learned is it's gonna feel weird because everybody wants to go off to the side and that is a form of leg riding, but from my experience with it, I it's not it doesn't fit me. I don't really do it very well, but uh I learned to stay on top and so did Dung Out. It feels really weird. Just like sitting on top. And if you can see, if you turn a little bit, Callie's got that ankle kind of splayed out. You, this keeps me, by hanging on to this, I can let go of it whenever I want, so it's not a danger. This keeps me upright. People try to hook this other leg, right here, and that's just throwing me back onto my hip, so I never hook this leg. This should be enough to keep you on top, and it should literally feel like you're just clamping right here. And uh, another, the most important thing about leg riding is the hips. There's a big difference between this and then right. that. See, see how Callie, get up there again, how Callie's kind of popping, popping her hips. You want to do that again? Popping her hips in on that power half as opposed to just trying to muscle it. Yeah, yeah use your strength, use your power. This isn't going to get you anywhere. Wrestling is a lot about your hips, and this is definitely one of those things where if you don't have hips, you're not going to get anywhere. So, you just throw them in. And eventually this guy's going to give up because it really hurts. Because it's right in their back. And, as I said, it's like super exhausting. And as you're popping that hip in, you're also um, splaying that ankle out away too. Yeah. Uh, to kind of stretch him even more. And it, uh, so, paying attention to... Both are just popping in and right here as that's kind of splayed out. Okay, Dunya, I'll talk about your focus again. A uh, good rule of thumb with legs, you essentially want your hips parallel to theirs right on top. This is where you'll get the most pressure. The way that kids get in trouble with leg riding is when the pressure falls off of their hips. In other words, your hips fall out of position. So the most, so com <laughs> the most common ways that happens is when you fall off to the side, pressure has now been taken off of their hips. I can move around more. So Another common way is when a kid gets too high. Mm -hmm. Like leg riding from up here, pressure has been taken off her hips. Good way to keep positioning on top. Um, a lot of kids try to hook this leg ride all the way through, in which case, because you try to snake your legs so far through, you're naturally getting yourself out of position and off their hip. A good leg ride, your leg isn't too far snaked in. Honestly, my leg is barely in. And right here, I have a whole lot of pressure on her hips. There's even a little bit of space there be behind Dung Yao's knee and Callie's thigh. Right here, my leg isn't too far snaked in, but it's not coming out. And this is where I have the most pressure, because my hips are, once again, right on top of Callie's. And you see Dung Yao um, doing what Callie did earlier. A on the other side, of the leg ride, splaying that foot out and creating pressure against the joint of the knee. Okay, so now what we're um, putting the focus back on is a uh, uh, good position when there's a little bit of scrambling going on. Bottom person is trying to move, whether they're trying to sit to their hip or come up or whatever. And the importance that, that the hips stay tight on top Callie tries to stay elevated, tries to, tries to stay off her hip as much as possible, but her saving grace now is that her hips are still tight. She's tight to the hips. So even sometimes when you end up on your butt, if you're staying tight, you've got good hooks, whether you're under the arms or working a power half, or straight half.
So in that whole, in that whole series, um, what you should have been seeing is Dung Yao's hips being tight um, up on top of mine. And even when, even though at times you can't help but end up being on your butt or on the side of your hip, it's that tightness that keeps you in the dominant position. Honestly, it's cliche, but nobody's perfect. When a coach goes to stand up to his butt, your hips are naturally going to get out of position. But it's about readjusting. See where you put the arms? And make sure that your hips get back on top. And see how, see how tight this is yet? And when he's looking for hooks, and he's got a little bit of leg hook there, but he's tight here too. Yeah. There isn't like all this space in here. Everything is, is yeah. tight in here. You can't, just because you got to keep your hips together, also means you, that like doesn't mean you can let your upper body get away too. You got to keep. Right. You got to be like a sticky booger. Yeah. Or like a spider monkey or something. Yeah, you are, you are glued, your chest is right up on their back. So what we're showing here um, is just the entry, the, the foundation of leg riding, which is um, getting legs in and talking about positioning. And you're going to see there's multiple ways to get legs in. Uh, once the leg is in, the, important, the most important part is staying tight to the hips and staying up high so that you're not sliding off off the hips. You want to stay up on, on top of the hips. Another good way to get legs in, right off the whistle, most guys will go right for a stand-up. The way you stop that is you chop the arm that they're breaking out with. So as Callie goes up for a stand-up, chop her down, toss the other leg in. Yeah, so you see Dung Yao there is uh, throwing the leg in on the back side, stopping that initial stand up, and then jump inside a little bit and throwing the leg in on the opposite side that he started riding. And again, notice how the hips are, are up, up high, hip, hips on hips, not sliding down. You never, you never want to be having your hips and butt sliding down towards the mat, staying up high with the hips. Sometimes what you can do, I do this a lot, is you break them down, let them come back up, because they leave themselves wide open. That's a good time to throw it in. Um, so it can definitely happen in the flow of wrestling. And again, Callie's last one there was, uh, do that again, Callie. So uh, breakdown happens, um, bottom wrestler comes back up, there's a window, that opens up for the hips, for the leg to go in. Alright, here's the spinal ride. Bottom guy goes down to his hip because of that spiral ride, and then the far side opens up to throw legs in. So she's going to spiral ride, and you see the leg kind of knee come up, and that space in there for the leg. There's not really like one single move you go to to get the hips in. It should be like just like moving them around. All you have to do is find that opening. And as soon as you got that, then you have it. So the key is just to keep moving around, keep bumping them forward, chopping them. Okay. Um, what we're going to show now, we've kind of seen a little bit before, but didn't necessarily talk about it, is what Callie's going to be looking to do is try. She's going to be putting in legs. Whenever Dong Yao's knees and elbows are fairly far apart. If his, Dong Yao, put your elbow down towards, if his knee and elbow are close together, he's defending that well. So Callie's got to get that opened up. He's gotta get, she's got to get space in there. And as soon as there's some space in there, that's when the legs come in. That's off that spiral. Again, you can see the knee and the elbow are relatively far apart. 
where space is created. And again, keep getting the hips back up. Your, your hips, your butt, never want to be on the mat. You want his down on the mat, but you do not want your own down on the mat. His hips stay high. Your, the main point is to have your hips always against theirs. As soon as you get that separation, you're in trouble. Yep. Tight to the hips. Tight and up. Tight and up. Tight and up. Okay. Um, next we'll uh, go to finishes. Okay, so what we're going to show here is a couple of breakdowns. After the legs are in, so we've got good position, now we're just going to um, break the person flat to the mat. Yes. Okay, so Dung Yao goes to a tripod position, Callie throws the other leg in, notice the hips are tight yet, and popping kind of at the elbows. If you have someone on your own side, it's a little bit, it's yeah. a little easier. <laughs> and when you get out there and do that, you're going to feel varying levels of, you know, resistance. Um, show cut some variations off of that. So it's either popping yeah. or um, grabbing the wrist. Sometimes it's difficult to just pop, so sometimes yep. I just... Yeah. Whatever you're going to be able to do to uh, get those arms, knock him off his base so his arms aren't supporting him. As anymore. I tripoded up, Callie kept really good pressure in with her hips. Honestly, before she even popped me at my elbows. The easy thing would have to do would have just been to get broken down because it's tough being down there. But once she pops at my elbows, it's, there's not much you can do to stay up. On this one, again, uh, are you recording? Yeah. So hips, my hips are up high and tight. And what I'm trying to create is like a 45 degree angle in here. Not at 90, okay, more at 45 right in here. And I'm shooting across using my off foot to push, and the leg that's hooked is just gonna stay hooked and shoot across the kind of towards Dung Yao's hand. So across and catching the, the cross face, the head, at the same time. And then from here, you know, a good wrestler is gonna base back out. But now you've got that the breakdown. Okay, show okay. from facing us so I can All see right. that you catching the cross face. So this angular motion here. So leg is in. Yeah, and I like to hook right here as long as, you know, you can keep those hips up high. So shooting across and then catching the face at the same time. Shoot across, catch the face. Alright, okay. right, go. So this is, this is legs going back to the cross body. So shooting across and then when Dung Yao comes back, if I can't catch him here on his back and he comes back, I've got the leg in and I come right to the power half and now I'm going to get off the legs and just finish with uh, a good half. Josh left from the side because it's hard to see the like the, what you're doing with legs. So the cross body is just the breakdown, shooting across. He's he's a good wrestler and goes right back to his stomach. And then I've got him broken down, so now I just come up on the back of the neck. Get that power half in, and now jump off. And finish nice and perpendicular. All right. A uh, good thing to do is extend them right here. You can grab right here, push this out, and just extend them. Because the, the farther out that the base gets while you're riding them, the less chance they have. If they're right here, you're going to have a lot harder time turning them than in. Out here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so paying attention to Dung Yao's the near side leg and his far side arm, hand. As you have this leg in with her far ankle hooked, reach with your arm, uh, the same arm that you have your leg in. So for my case, it's my right leg and my right arm reach inside her right armpit and then the way you're going to be stretching her is in these directions. This ankle going that way and this arm going that way. As you're doing that, keep pressure in with her hips and she's naturally going to get broken down. Okay, what Dung Yao is going to show here 
Um, you're going to see his right leg hooking Callie's right leg. Left leg hooking Oh, his left on her right. And he's kind of scooping it, and he's going to bring it up over the top of his own leg. So he gets that leg right in there again. Go, do that again. So Dung Yao's left leg on Callie's right leg. Then he's going to pick it up and slide it kind of over his right leg, and his right leg kind of goes underneath. Um, now he's got it. Cross body here. Breakdown right here. You keep that leg in and keep it elevated so you have plenty of room. And you just put your right or left knee behind their butt and then hook your other leg over, hook your foot over your knee pit, I guess your knee pit. Figure four. Her own leg. Her own leg. Figure so four and her own leg. Get it on your own kneecap. The tighter you have it, the better. And the higher up on the yes. hip, you the know better. It's way up here. Up, up high, don't want it sliding down on the knee. Up in there, jam it up in there. You have more leverage the high you have it up. So you don't want it down here. You're not gonna be able to really turn them that well, so you gotta get it up by their hips, so your hips are touching. And you want this thing tight, you don't want this, your, your ankles hooked. You want your knee pit and your foot hooked. So then, the motion that you're gonna go is in and over at the same time. So you really got to throw in your hips, and you got to pretty much just want to hurt this guy. Otherwise... And before you do that, Callie, um, I, I, again, just to make sure that, that that was heard, when Callie's figure fouring her own leg, her foot is above her knee. She doesn't want it to slide down to her calf. She wants it at the knee or above. Yeah, the tighter, the better. Um, and similarly, the higher, the better. So sometimes you can even block this elbow so you can't post out, but as you're hipping over really hard, catch his face and do a nasty cross face. And then, sorry. And <laughs> football it like this. Keep your legs tight. You don't want to let that loose. And just squeeze. And keep throwing your hips in. And a lot of times you can't pin from here. So uh, you can get your five back points and you can try to go this route, which is the overhooking the arm and throw it down on the mat. The heart it kind of looks like he can turn into me, but he really can't if you put the pressure. Yeah, right. put that pressure right back in him as soon as you yeah, feel you, him starting to come up a little bit. Yeah, you got to put the pressure inward towards him instead of outward that way. And then when I'm footballing his head, like I showed before, I kind of forgot to remember this. You, it's easy to fall right here at first, but make sure right away you're back up here. Your stomachs should almost be completely on the mat. So you don't want to be laying on your hip. No spooning. Just right there. Alright, my favorite move, this is pretty much the only thing I ever did, was the power half. To do that, um, you get right here. You gotta be really tough. And you go right here. And you just crank. And the farther out you can get your elbow, like the closer you can get your elbow to theirs, the better it's going to be. Because right here, he's using a lot of these muscles and that's harder. But when you get it down here, it's uncomfortable for him. It's a little bit harder for him to res resist because it's more his, just, just his shoulder muscle. So you get right here and you're just pulling, pulling the neck and pulling this up. And then the key to this is throwing in the hips. So, yeah, I'll show you. Now again, this is, this is really important that Callie keep her hips up high because she is going down to the side of her hip, so she's got to keep those hips up and tight. And I like to pull tight. this ankle with me as I go, so. And then I like to throw this other leg if in. You, yeah, if you can get so that other boot in. turn into me. If I leave it out here, he can turn into me. And I'm still in good position, but it's not something that I could have gotten points off of or even you know. So, I showed you how to get them down. And uh, once you get them down, and also, I don't push off of this leg. I throw my hips right into their back, right into their spine, like kind of their sideways spine, because it's going to feel like it's going to break. So, that was pretty uncomfortable for me, obviously. That's what I do. Um, <laughs> 
So you just get him right here. Throw him this other leg. Once you have this other leg, there's a first you want to get your back points. Don't go for the pin right away. So what I do is I let go of this hand, kind of weave it under like that, and hold on to this one. But that can be. Some people don't like that. They think it's dangerous. So another thing you can do is keep this right here, the one that you were using to push down the head. Keep it right there across your face. And go like that, like you're like posing for a camera. And just push away. Just stiff right arm. Here. Yeah, stiff arm pretty much. So then once you get your five back points, you can loop it in right here. Keep your hips tight. This takes a little bit of practice because it feels weird. But kind of just like slowly scoot mm -hmm. on top. So yeah. it's not one fast movement, it's slowly scooting on top. If you try to do it really fast, you're probably going to create too much space. And you really got to stay tight when you're doing that, otherwise they can slip out or turn you. With the power half, it's a good combination of loosening up and then tightening up. And then as you're settling, that's when you're going to get the most falls is by slowly settling in. Yeah, I think it's like some other pinning combinations. Uh, uh, it's there's there's adjustment within the pinning combination. Um, how it starts to how it finishes it can be very different, um, but the idea is the same. You know, so it, it's it's a half power half, but you might slide off the hips to to, to get perpendicular, um, or you may uh, get your body more angular. So there's there's um, some adjustment within from beginning to end. Yeah, it's all about learning how to feel it out. Okay, so Deng Yao's power, doing power half also, but it's, it's gonna look a little different and accent the differences. Um, Callie's power half drives more off to one side, while mine takes you more at a 45 degree angle. The way I do that is, once you have this lever, another important thing is a lot of Leg riders will try in this power half to hook at their own hand. And right here, I mean, you're not going to slip off, but you're not putting too much pressure. The way you add that extra pressure is by hooking at your forearm because then you can really crank her neck down. Um, one thing that I really like doing with my power half is with this leg in, drive off the mat towards one side because that's where you're going to get a lot of pressure on her shoulder. With my finish, I like to throw this other leg in, then finish off. And, and you notice there, the mat. I'm gonna have Deng Yao do that again. And you notice there, the adjustment that Deng Yao makes, once he, once he goes to the mat, he, cut, he brings his hips back up again, readjusts and gets up on top of Callie's body to be in a little bit more advantageous and dominant position. So, once again, hooking her left ankle with my leg. Hooking at your own forearm, driving off of this foot. And now, see Once how she's broken this. down, throw the other leg in, get your hips back on top. Hips back up. You and can even figure fall. Not figure four, but. Not figure four. He's, he's an artist, he's a yeah. um, The way a lot of kids get in trouble by going too far over the top is most commonly with this power half. This power half isn't so much taken over the top as it is to the side. And when kids try to take it over the top, and that's when they'll get in trouble mm -hmm. for falling too far over. Another move that's real simple but real effective is just the cross face cradle with the legs in. So essentially all it is, I'm hooking behind the knee while I have her ankle hooked so that she can't post her ankle back and get her knee away from her face. Because that's when cr cradles can happen is when the knee and the head are together. So blocking off behind the knee with this leg hooked, Hitting your cross face, locking 
And then with this cradle, you can finish it in essentially every direction. My favorite way is taking it backwards. Settling, getting it backwards. Again, with the cradle, hooking her left ankle, locking out at her knee, hitting her cross face, hooking right here. Another important thing about the cradle that a lot of kids mess up on, the part where your elbow bends should be where her knee and her head is at. A lot of kids will think that just because this is locked, that the cradle is good. Well, sometimes they can be too deep either this direction, where the bend to this elbow is hard. at almost her shoulder, yeah. in which case she's not going anywhere because you don't have any power there. And sometimes a lot of kids will try to cradle with the bendy part of her, your elbow at yeah. almost her hip, in which case she's not going anywhere. Yeah, and you're sliding so, off. Bend to your elbow at her head and at her knee. Okay, so again, looking at Zheng Yao's feet along with the so again, hip position and the arms. Hooking this ankle, blocking off of the knee, hitting your cross face. Finishing for back points. One more time. Another finish to the cradle that's a little bit unorthodox, but can really work well, is when you're trying to crank her down at this hip, but she's being strong, in which case she's not going down. Um, in this case, she's probably putting her pressure in this direction so that you can't take her that way. Then dive through and then roll her over the top of your own body. This is called a suicide cradle. Kind of like submarines underneath. It doesn't have a name. I call it the banana chain splatle. It's all that's right. That's kind of an annoying name. <laughs> BCS. I, I, that's, I, that's actually what I call it, BCS. <laughs> what you want to do is hook up their arm just like with your guillotine. And this ride with your leg in and this arm hooked is called a guillotine ride. And then what you want to do is start taking them back for the guillotine, but a lot of kids will know how to defend, in which case they'll tuck this arm, this hand, into their crotch so that you can't pull it over your head. What you want to do here is reach underneath their crotch behind the backside with your free arm. Start tilting them back this way. As you're tilting them back, they'll be putting pressure on their shoulder in which case, as you're tilting them back, dive through over the top for your back points. So. Yeah, switch directions. All right, so again, hooking this arm with your guillotine ride. Uh, if he knows how to defend against the guillotine, he'll be tucking his hand into his own crotch. Right here, reach underneath the backside. Notice how Dunyao pulls his elbow out. Now he's kind of down oh, his yeah. waist. Yeah, if you have your elbow all the way in here, you can crank this elbow and face plant me, and that sucks. So, guillotine ride. Once he tucks his hand into his own crotch, snake the elbow out a little bit. This is really all you need. Just make a fist, and this really isn't going anywhere. Reach underneath the backside, start tilting them back bait them, and then dive up through over the top, so. Keeping this one for your back points. Another real nasty move from the leg ride is called the guillotine. With the guillotine, you wanna hook their opposite arm to your leg. So in this case, since my right leg is in, it's coach's left arm. You wanna hook that with the same arm that you have the leg in. So in that case, it's my right arm. And with this, since you're attacking at the arm and not the face, you can be real nasty with hooking it, and refs aren't really going to call you for anything. So, snap it this direction. Then, what you want to do with the guillotine is hook over your own head, and then take him over his post arm. As you're doing that, hook behind the head, 
lock here. So this is the, the body. And right here, you can even toss the other leg in, get your five back points, and after that, readjust for the fall. One more time. This is standard. Arm, take it over your head. Locking around his head, keeping pressure to the leg, getting your back points. All right. Another variation to the guillotine would be once this arm's hooked and taken over your head, instead of hooking behind coach's head, hook underneath his arm and then take him over his post arm with his own body weight. With this move, it's important to make sure that your leg ride leg still has pressure in. Because if you let up with pressure on this leg, coach can just turn into me for reversal. One more time. Hooking at the arm, take it over your head, hooking inside their arm, Take him over his own body weight. Keeping pressure with your leg red leg. Grab your back points. Readjust. For fall. This last move is called the banana split. So, one thing that I want to note, turn facing the other way. One thing that I want to note is um, the way a lot of kids get in trouble with the banana split is once they have this leg in, they think that the banana split is a move that you can just power and crank, in which case we'll just try to hook here and then do everything they can to get her to her back. It's it's not gonna happen. You, you don't have enough power in your arms to be able to lift her hips over your, uh, I do, but you probably don't. Um, Who's you? <laughs> um, with the banana split, mostly it actually comes out of scrambles. So, with your hips on top of theirs, you'll be going for different moves, like your cross face cradle, your guillotine. Then, the mistake that the bottom guy will make is they'll try to stand up. And because you have pressure in with your leg, they'll be standing up with their opposite leg. So once she puts this knee up, she's in trouble for the banana split. You want to hook right at her knee. What I like to do is hook at my elbow, because the deeper you can get it on your own arm, the tighter it's going to be. Right here, she's, she's screwed. Like, <laughs> um, she's, she's not going anywhere once this knee is hooked. Um, you can essentially just settle in now. There's different ways to finish in the banana split. You can take it over the top. To the side or even back. In this case, the best way to take it would be to the side. So just settle in. Oh, okay, ow. Oh. Uh -huh. ow. Grab your back points. We'll mute out the sounds. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's a you know very safe way to take it back also. Yeah. This last move that we're gonna show is called the spladle. The spladle is really just a variation to the banana split. So once again, it'll come out of a scramble where you're hitting your other leg riding moves like your cross face cradle, your power half, and then if she makes the mistake of stepping up and then you hook, right here you can take her backwards for the banana split, but if you get high up, you can take her over the top instead. I finish here for your back points and she's pinned. So one more time with the spladle. It's coming off of your different um, leg riding moves like your power half or your cross face cradle. Then once she makes the mistake of trying to stand up, you want to hook once again inside her knee, hooking at your own elbow. Then right here you have the option of taking her to the side or backwards with the banana split. But if you get high enough, Instead, you can take her over the top and finish with your spladle. Once again, with the spladle, um, the issue, well, the mistake that most kids make is step up. 
once they have this leg hooked, they'll try to go for the spladel and get too high without having it fully locked in yet. So a lot of kids will try to get all the way to her head. And this is where you would finish a spladel, but I haven't finished it yet. In which case her head will pop out and you're in trouble. So, the correct way. Um, the key to a good spladel is a strategic process of loosening up and tightening up. So once you have this leg hook, while I'm taking her over, I'm not in position to finish the spladel yet. My body is more on her shoulders and not her head. But as I'm going over, my body's slowly slipping. And once she's taken over, my body is at her head, in which case her shoulders will be flat to the mat. I mean, I do want leg riding to still be around after we graduate because we were really the well, last two kids on the team that. We were the only kids that yeah. rode legs. Yeah. Just like to talk about your experience with leg riding. <laughs> All right. So my experience, um, well, me and Nagya are probably like the few that have ever like, like our move is leg riding on top. Like that's what we do. People know us for that. So. Like, I practiced leg riding for two years with four different coaches to try to get, like, a good feel. And, yeah, in that two years, I would do it out on the mat in a live match, but only when I knew that this kid wasn't that good, like, and it wasn't putting me at risk. But, uh, and it's a different feel with a singlet on, too. It's, it's a lot slipperier, so sometimes I would have to come into practice a well, little in advance with my singlet on. Uh, to learn how to get a good feel for that because it's different but it's a big mistake that kids make when you just go out there and you do it because it looks cool it looks easy it looks fun yeah it's it's like easy but it's very precise and it, you got to have good technique when you do it otherwise you're most likely going to get pinned it's like one of those moves where you can do it well or you can't and you get pinned and but it can also be really good if you're if you do get really good at like feeling it out, you can just hold on. If there's a minute left, you can just kind of ride them out, try to do stuff. It could be a good move to buy you time and keep you safe if you know how to do it. But I don't like it when I see people who don't know what they're doing go out there and try it because it's, it's it's ends up being like dangerous for the entire team. So invest the time in it before. Yeah, invest the time and don't be cocky about it. You'd be surprised how easy it is to get turned. My first experience with leg riding was um, when I was watching the state tournament in the Cole Center my sophomore year. And it was state finals and um, it, it just it looked awesome to me. So then the next season I came in to um, this club team called Advance, and first practice, I went out and tried to leg ride, and I, I got pinned. <laughs> and uh, one thing that my coach told me that really stuck was, um, he told me, it's like Aaron Rodgers playing quarterback. It's not that easy. He makes it look that way, but the thing with leg riding is um, you, you, you can't take for granted. You never sacrifice positioning. Um, don't go out there and start riding legs and start going for all these crazy tilts and guillotines just because it looks cool. Never sacrifice positioning for offense. Positioning always comes first. And that's the most important thing that anybody can tell you about leg riding is positioning. It's not about looking cool. I do only the power half and the figure four to the cross body and it works almost every time and it's not that cool but I get a lot of points that way even pin sometimes so winning is cool winning is cool <laughs> <laughs> well it's you know it's a it's not easy it can look easy but it's not it's like it's like you're... you can you can sacrifice positions so easily so quickly and be I, you know you can see people reversed in three seconds it's oh. so frustrating watching somebody who doesn't know what they're doing try to do it because it's so dangerous. You have to spend so, a lot of time with it. 
it's, it's a on your common, own. I don't know. I think it's important to like learn how to scramble in that position and learn how to fight from it before you learn how to do moves from it. Thanks, Callie. Thanks, Dung Yao. Uh, hope that uh, who's ever watching this uh, gets some great advice and tips on leg riding. <laughs>